Welcome. Great to be in front of you presenting on why serverless Flink matters and in the world of stream processing, right? Um, my name is Mayank. Um, here is JS, um, and we'll be talking about this. Quick introductions. Um, uh, went to school in India, um, worked at VMware uh, in their cloud computing unit for a few years, uh, then went to grad school at Northwestern, and finally I'm at Confluent right now um, working for Flink. Um, quick note about this little photo that you see here where I acted in this movie which was inspired by the Bollywood hit Three Idiots, and uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, I would describe the genre as uh, trashy but good, so watch it at your own risk. And I'll hand it over to JS for his intro. A uh, quick intro about myself. I've been in the tech industry for 20 years now, working in a few companies. And most recently, I'm at Confiant, when I'm uh, running a product management team focused on Flink. And before I was at Microsoft, I was already working on streaming. And I'm very excited to talk about Flink today. Awesome. Uh, so before we talk about the agenda, I want to engage and learn a little more about you, right? So show of hands, how many of you are familiar with stream processing? Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. So I'm gonna quickly go over the stream processing bit. How many of you are familiar with Flink? Have used Flink? Okay, okay, we love it, we love it. So yeah, you're at the right spot. And finally, and stay with me. Uh, how many of you have watched Star Wars? Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna have a lot of fun, guys. Awesome, <laughs> cool. Uh, so on the agenda today, uh, gonna learn about stream processing a bit and the challenges with stream processing, right? I mean. In this conference, you've definitely learned about why stream processing is awesome, right? And why it's simple. But we'll learn that there are a few challenges, right? Uh, and then we're gonna learn about why Flink is awesome, and the challenges with Flink, and finally, um, why we need serverless in the world of Flink and stream processing in general. And we'll end with a nice, cute demo uh, that I hope you guys will enjoy. Cool. Um, so stream processing, right? I mean, it is computing over unbounded streams of data, so it's, it's nothing special. And if you watch the keynote, you know that uh, we see this as a generalization of batch processing, right? And so when anyone asks, why do you need real-time processing? There are certain use cases where you can't wait for the processing to happen, right? For example, fraud detection, right? And so when you go into uh, real-time applications, uh, you'd expect the processing to happen in real time. So if it's a shipment, if it's a sale, anything that's happening um, which is on the real-time data side, you need to process it, and you can power some rich, rich front-end customer experiences or some back-end operations where your microservices are talking or whatever, right? Um, so really the world is moving in the direction of stream processing. However, there are all these different use cases, right? So it's not just, hey, you process something and then send it across, right? So first is data exploration. And I was in this talk earlier today with Bloomberg where they did mention that one of the challenges with Kafka and real-time data is just exploration, right? Unless you're an engineer, you can't really see what's going on in the real-time data, right? And that's where you know, a stream processor helps, right? It, uh, it has built-in tools which would allow you to kind of explore this data, right? Um, explore not just the data, so metadata, write some interactive queries, learn what it's all about before you actually push it into a sink or whatever. Um, data pipelines, this is all about the filters and aggregation. So you have batch pipelines, CTL pipelines, eh, streaming pipelines, right? The same operators is just happening in real time with variable throughput coming in, right? Um, and finally, real time apps, right? And this is the most exciting part because you can actually build full applications, right? And there are some of the examples listed here, which is threat detection, quality of service on the floor shop in, in a factory, uh, fraud detection in financial services, intelligent routing in the world of IoT, and finally some real-time alerting as well, right? So all of these are use cases for uh, stream processing. But you knew all of that, didn't you? What are the challenges, right? Um, first is ordering and timing. That is one of the biggest things that we hear about stream processing, right? how do you handle this out of order data or you know, late arriving events, right? Uh, and that's one of the things which batch processing does really well because you've collected all the events and then you're processing it, right? Um, but yeah, how, how, how do you manage these inconsistencies in the incoming data? The second is state management, right? Um, so when you are processing something, it's typically not just stateless processing, you will have some state which is the application state, right? Uh, typically it's um, in the case of aggregations. 
So if you're doing an aggregation, let's say over a period of 30 days, right? There's a sensor that needs to calculate the average and then um, needs to do, take some action based on that average. Then, uh, you know, how do you maintain the state? Especially it becomes uh, very difficult when there are distributed uh, applications, right? In a distributed environment. Fault tolerance. Now, you've heard about exactly one semantics um, at, least, at least once, right? Which means that do you want, uh, in terms of in, if there's a failure, is it okay if an event is not processed? Is it okay if an event is processed twice? Or is it imperative that you need to process each event exactly once, right? Which is in a case of uh, financial services, right? You don't want duplicate uh, processing of events, right? And finally, scalability, right? When you bring all of these challenges together at scale, it can, it can be a huge problem, right? Um, when, when there is a large throughput, state management becomes a problem, fault tolerance becomes a problem, and this whole ordering and timing itself uh, uh, scales as a problem as well. Cool. So, why Flink, right? Flink is like the Mandalorian, right? And this is where the Star Wars question was. So, Flink is powerful, just like uh, the Mandalorian. For, for those who don't know, the Mandalorian are these um, people who were banished from the world of Mandalore, and then they come back and they fight, and yeah, they are mercenaries, right? So Flink is a mercenary because it gives you all these weapons, all these tools to actually master stream processing. So what's great about it, right? Um, first of all, just scalability. Right? Um, there are inherent primitives in Flink because you, the scaling happens on the task managers, right? Which, so it scales horizontally really, really well. Right? Um, and of course, it's been adopted at scale. It's proven at scale uh, at companies like Netflix, Bloomberg, as well as uh, Uber Eats. Right? So it's, it's been proven. The second is language flexibility. So SQL, Java, Python, without changing the underlying primitives, you don't have to learn anything new. Your language of choice just, just works with Flink, right? And finally, unified processing, right? So we know that batch is not going anywhere, right? It will still be there. And so if you want to easily process something, uh, a stream of data, as well as you know, a, a fixed historical data in the same application, Flink is your tool of choice, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's really popular with Kafka users, of course, because it works really well with it. Um, and so I talked about the different challenges with stream processing. How does uh, Flink solve them, right? The first was ordering and timing. And so Flink provides something which is event time processing, right? So each event, you can define a particular window on each event, right? So it's not micro-batching. It's not time-based processing. It's each event will be processed, right? And the second thing is watermarks, which is an advanced concept, but watermarks is essentially how time flows in Flink, right? So you can achieve some really advanced use cases if you define a custom watermarking strategy. The second is state management. So Flink maintains a local state with the task manager for all their uh, state computations, right? Of course, if the state is big, you put it on rocks, TV, or whatever. But this allows this low latency computations, right? Um, fault tolerance. Um, so there is exactly one semantics which I talked about earlier. Uh, Flink is able to provide this. How is it? Uh, so there is consumer replay. There are distributed snapshots, regular checkpointing. Um, and finally, there's a two-phase commit on the uh, consumer end as well. right? So all, using all of these uh, uh, primitives, Flink is able to achieve exactly one semantics. And finally, on scalability and performance, so I talked about the elastic scale out. Uh, there are some network traffic optimization as well that uh, Flink does. So there is um, operator chaining, and there are these buffers uh, between operators to manage the data flow, right? So, and of course, there is back pressure handling that comes inbuilt within, within Flink. Um, so, is Flink the perfect stream processor? Seems like it, right? It solved all the problems with stream processing. Not quite, right? Because if you self-manage Flink, if you just download the open source Flink and decide to run it on Kubernetes, it will come with a lot of problems, right? The first one is, of course, configuration and setup, right? Uh, and the biggest one is just resource allocation. So look at this uh, uh, image on the, on the right, right? These are the kinds of memories that you have to kind of configure, right? You can skip some of these, but in order to achieve performance, you will individually have to configure all of these kind of memories, right? Pain. Dependency management, um, 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Dependency management, um, again, configure a bunch of connectors and databases, not fun, right? And the configuration itself, there's several modes you can do it, right? Application mode versus session mode, right? Do it standalone on, or, or on Kubernetes. Well, read 100 blogs or ask ChatGPT, probably it'll help you, right? Not fun. Challenge number two, monitoring and maintenance. So Flink provides you all the metrics that you would possibly need. But how do you know which ones are important, right? Challenge. And then version upgrade. So if you look at this figure, it's actually the Flink downloads uh, from March this year, right? 70% um, of the downloads actually have, are from the unsupported versions, right? Which is 1.15 and, and before that, right? Those are unsupported versions, so you're not gonna get community support there. And every time, if, if uh, backward compatibility is a concern for you, then just version upgrades becomes a big, big issue, right? And finally, disaster recovery, you'll have to manage your own snapshots, you'll have to manage your own save points, not fun. Um, and finally, total cost of ownership, right? Um, of course, you'll have to maintain these hardware costs, right? And typically, if you don't, if you either build your own scheduler and your autoscaler, and still you'll have some underutilized hardware costs, right? Finally, expertise, um, right? I mean, you need experts to actually be able to learn all these concepts about Flink and stream processing and deliver something. And finally, any hour or any day that you're not uh, spending actually improving your core product or your core service, that's, that's a big opportunity cost, right? That's a lot of, it's a big miss, right? So, oh, and challenge number four. So once, let's say you've done all of this, you've, you know, you've mastered these concepts and you've done a successful POC, security, right? So there's no granular uh, RBAC that comes out of the box with Flink, right? Um, state backend, again, if you're using RocksDB or something, encryption at rest, you'll have to configure. And finally, if you're using session clusters, you know, there's no inbuilt support uh, for multi-tenancy as well, right? So yeah, this is not fine, not fine at all. Um, so what, what do we do, right? Is it really the way, right? Is self-managed Flink really the way? Um, not quite, not quite, not quite. What we want you to do is use the power of serverless, right? It's this mystical force, it's this invisible force that you don't have to uh, learn a bunch of weapons to be successful at Flink, right? Uh, the solution is uh, serverless Flink. And with that, I invite Master Yoda to talk about serverless Flink. JS? Uh, thanks, Mayank, for the intro. Uh, so yeah, with all, all this challenge and the opportunity to really have uh, one of the best stream processing framework uh, with Flink, we just wanted to make that easier for customers and solve all the problems we saw before by providing a serverless Flink. So what does it mean? First is that to make sure you can get all the power of Flink. So you saw in multiple sessions today, the keynote Flink is very powerful. Uh, you can do a uh, time window at the event level, it's true real time. Every event can trigger its own windows, for example. You can do pattern matching uh, with match recognize, detect this complex pattern with simple uh, SQL, completely declarative, or do complex join. Uh, stream to stream join, stream to batch, version join, everything supported. So serverless Flink, it, first it's Flink, with all the power of Flink. But it's also a full serverless cloud native product. Uh, we talk about version, we want people to not think about version. It's evergreen, always running. You deploy your application, it can run 24-7, 365 days a year, and we take care of the OS upgrade, the security patch, the Flink upgrade, and uh, the, the, the program, even if it's mission critical, never stops. So that, that's the key. And we also take care of scale. So my own show like all the kind of scale of decision you need to take, like how to run Flink, what kind of cluster mode, what kind of memory. Uh, so we want to make sure everything is taken care of for you. And for that, we have auto scale at two levels. Uh, so here I will talk about the level at what we call compute pool, so that our unit of resource, where you can run uh, multiple uh, jobs or query here. And we make sure that can scale up whenever you need, so you're ready for Black Friday. Uh, but you can also uh, put a kind of limit uh, in terms of budget to make sure that you can control what you spend. And of course, we have elastic scale down, and when nothing is running, we can pause that and the zero billing. So it's really a true usage billing uh, based on exactly what you do uh, with the product. And we have a separation of compute, so Flink and storage, Kafka, they can scale independently, so you can have large storage with low compute, 
a large compute with low storage, you can scale independently, and it's very easy to kind of optimize for your own use case. We also optimize how they work together. Even if they're separate, they work very well together. So that's my next slide. Uh, sorry, I'm actually <laughs> talking faster than uh, the flow here, but basically, they are co-located uh, in Confluent Cloud, and so Flink and Kafka can have very high throughput. Like we talk about million events per second, it could be very expensive, but also it can uh, bring some latency. So we make sure we co-locate them in the same region, even in the same availability, availability zone, to make sure we reduce both latency and network cost. And we can do that very efficiently at the task level. But in addition to uh, auto-scale at the kind of the container level, what we call our resource pool, we also optimize every job independently. So we look at every task, and we look at how much resource we need. So it's not only about CPU and memory, it's also about how many messages are coming uh, in the input topic. Uh, what's the backlog? Just to make sure the system is performing as needed. And we can change parallelism at the task level to make sure we optimize the whole job and that can always process the data you need. And we will provide uh, also job level monitoring to make sure people can see that, export it, and monitor it so that we can put alerts and make sure like things run 24-7. Uh, so that's serverless, but what about serverless plus plus? So that's going even to the next level is like how can we make that even easier for everyone? So we talk about Flink, uh, SQL language, very powerful. But in addition to that, we want to provide a very rich experience. So we are providing both a CLI experience and a SQL editor. Uh, you probably saw that in the keynote yesterday. I, I will go to another demo in a few seconds. And in addition to that, we have a complete integration with Confluent Cloud in terms of governance, in terms of security, to make sure everything works together. So for example, for governance, whenever you have a schema and you put R back on that, you have the, if you can have access to that uh, to a topic, you can see the data with Flink. Flink is kind of a SQL endpoint on top of the data. Uh, RBAC is governed by the RBAC in Confluent Cloud. Schema is governed by a schema registry in Confluent Cloud. So we don't duplicate anything. Whenever you create a table in Flink, you see a topic in Kafka. Whenever you create a topic in Kafka, you see a table in Flink. They are working together all the time. And we support both user authentication. So user who can see topics, their, their access right uh, will, will be used. Or you can use a service account when you want to run something 24 seven. Um, so with, with that, with this new interface, with that full integration, we believe we can have various persona using Flink uh, from developer, data analyst, and data engineers. Dif different people can use different tools and different uh, language. So SQL could be very useful for data analysts. Python can be useful for data engineers, and developers can use Java, for example. Uh, so our goal is really to provide the best tool for these personas and making sure they can all use Flink to explore the data, understand how to get insight, and productize real-time mission-critical apps. Uh, so I will show you like how things work in practice. So make sure uh, yeah, it works. So let me show you in the Confront Cloud interface, we have this new Flink preview that we just opened yesterday. Uh, so we have this concept of compute pool, and I'll show you how easy it is to start. There's only two questions, three actually. What do you want to, to run? So, so far we support only a four region, but we'll extend that uh, and extend two other clouds. And the two other question is give me a name here and give me a max budget. So that budget is basically the maximum auto scale. Here we have only few value. We will have much more uh, values in the future to, to be able to scale up to very large uh, workload. You click on uh, create, and in a few seconds, you will have a new resource pool, a compute pool, ready to process your data. When it's ready, you can click on open the workspace, and here you can start to process the data. What is interesting here is that all the topics in this environment uh, are here. You can see my cluster, my topics, and I can just do a select star, so I just need to set up the, the, data, the default database, and I can just select data. I don't need to create any metadata. It's already there for me. The security is already there because I'm logged in with my account. We already have access to that. So I can start by an exploratory query and see what's in the data. And so when I run the query, basically I create a Flink job here, and I will see the result. So that pool was just created. We auto start it. It was not started because uh, no query was running. And then it will be warm, and we can do more query. And this is the result from, from this table here. Um, so that's kind of, kind of first you know, like minute of use. You can see I barely use a keyboard. Like we, we can do most of this with the, uh, the mouse. Like just two questions to create the pool. Uh, select star, no metadata involved, no, no, no deep knowledge of Kafka. 
you come from the SQL eyes and you can uh, directly use your SQL knowledge. Uh, so let's see also like how do, to do that with the CLI. Uh, let's see little slow here, one sec. Okay, so CLI, we, we enrich the, the Confluent CLI to have a SQL shell uh, with extended capability for autocomplete uh, to be able to explore the data and do all your query directly here. Uh, so I'm logging here to the CLI. I can see uh, what catalog are here. So a catalog are the equivalent of environment. Then I can see, um, uh, I, I go to that Confluent we talked about yesterday, that, that catalog, and I can see all the database. So that will show you all the cluster I have in this environment. Then I can choose uh, one of uh, these database, and I can start to see some, some table. Uh, so these queries are just a metadata query. At some point, like before, I can start to select the data, a uh, simple select star, for example, uh, to, to see the data in, in my table. You can see we have autocomplete uh, for everything. Then we can see the streaming data, and we have a kind of rich experience in the CLI, so that's loading the query from, uh, from that pool. Uh, it, it will show the stream and keep updating the stream in, in, in real time here as the data is flowing into Kafka. Uh, so very useful to explore the data. Uh, you can see very few steps in order to do that. Uh, and that, that's basically it for the CLI. We can do a lot of other queries. Of course, it's a full, full uh, Flink SQL supported here. So we can do aggregation and things like this. Uh, what is interesting in that visualization mode is like you can see the results. So I'm doing an aggregation here, all the, the count of the purchase here. Uh, What's and you, you will see the result here. It keeps being updated, so you see the count is changing. I can also switch to the change log to see what's happening in, instead of the result, so I can see all the insertion updates that are happening in the, in the backend. Um, so uh, fu fully feature CLI uh, to, to use Flink. But we understand CLI is not always the easiest tool to, to, to use the data, so I want to double click on the workspace I showed before. Uh, so in the workspace before, I just show you one SQL query, but I want to, to go a little, little deeper of what we can do. First here, on the left, you see all your Kafka cluster, all your data, and you can see the deep integration here with actual, the actual schema and the actual data. You can see message sample, you can do schema from the schema registry here directly. So you already know what kind of shape your data has, and you can start the query accordingly. Uh, so you can see the results, uh, like we, we did before, simple select star. Uh, you can create new, a new query here, so the, the things keep being updated because it's streaming query, so you can either keep that updated or uh, stop the query. No, I'm understanding more of my data. I, I can do some, some other query to see all the purchase in my flights and understand like uh, what, what kind of items are sold. Uh, so I, I do a query on that stream. It, it updates here. I see like uh, we have 20 different kind of things sold here. Uh, now what I want to do is actually to join data between different clusters. Uh, so we didn't talk too much about that, but Flink can enable you to query and read and write from different clusters, even from different environments. So it can really like, take my two, uh, my two clusters here. I have one cluster called CRM, one cluster called Flight, uh, and both of them have some interesting data, so I want to bridge the gap and, and join them. And so I can do the revenue uh, per, per customer here by joining this data here. I do a love join, so I see the revenue for every customer here. I have uh, 300 results. Uh, know what I want to do because I, I think this is something I need to, uh, to, to save and a lot of other teams can reuse it so I can build a data product based on that. So all my sales team or everyone can use that. So what I will do is actually to create a table here directly in Flink. Uh, I give a schema, customer ID, I give the revenue, and I, I click on run. So that will create a table and a topic. Uh, and then I can do a, a long running job, so insert into, basically create a query that will run 24 seven and keep updating uh, this, this view, basically. Uh, it's a materialized view with these results uh, that become also a topic that can be accessed from everyone. Uh, so I can check like if, if my query is, is created here, I will have all the metrics back directly. If I have an exception, uh, exception will be here. And I also want to show you like what happened on the Kafka side. So I go to this, uh, to this cluster and I can go to my topics. I see that new topic was just created here. And I can see there's already some message uh, just created by that long running query. And I can see the shape of the message. So I have my revenue per, per customer here. Uh, and of course there's a schema attached to it because we defined the schema when we did that create table. So this always in sync kind of uh, duality between topic and, and, and table. 
Um, so that's basically it. You can see like how rich is the experience, uh, completely integrated in terms of metadata and data. Uh, very easy to use. If you remember my first kind of uh, query, it's like from the time I created the compute pool to the time I did a query, it's basically uh, less than one minute. Uh, you, you just need to get access to the data. Uh, Flink is here and just help you to uh, use the access you already have and just make things easier for everyone. Uh, and in the last query I did in Flink, I ran a long running query that's still running here and will run forever until I stop it. So even if we up upgrade the backend, the Flink version, that table will always be updated. So that's basically uh, our Flink offering in a nutshell, focusing on serverless and making sure that every people can run mission critical workload with uh, very few worry about the, the backend. So you can focus on the business logic and not on operationalization of Flink. So uh, that being said, uh, we can open the floor to uh, questions. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. If you have any questions, happy to continue.